Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Gita Mary and today I am going to try something completely different. I am going to attempt to make gourmet vegan food. I love the dishes that I can do but they're very rustic or they're very fast foody or healthy versions of fast food and I thought it could be really fun to sort of expand my cooking into a more gourmet-ish direction. Not permanently but I would really like to explore what you can do with vegan cooking in terms of making beautiful, simple and kind of up their dishes. But before we get started, this video is obviously sponsored. Da, 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 this video is sponsored by Skillshare and Skillshare, if you don't know at this point, is an online learning community with thousands of different courses. So you can learn so many different things. On this channel, I've talked both about martial arts and drawing and making your own paper. And today I am drawing inspiration from Skillshare's cooking classes because they have lots of them and they also have some really, really good ones that I can use in this context. One that I've really, really liked is Inspired Cooking because it sort of has this more artistic perspective on cooking and that's sort of what I want to mimic in this video. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Also, the first thousand people to use the link in my bio will get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership and the standard Skillshare Membership is $10 a month with the annual subscription. Thank you so much to Skillshare for sponsoring, now let's get into the video. I would also really like to add, in terms of whatever I'm about to embark on here, that I would really like to turn it into a series. So today is sort of like an appetizer, something you can use as an appetizer, and next time I really want to expand into like the main entree dish, and then lastly a dessert. And if it goes well, I would like to do it again. Okay, now let's get into the video. I'm scared. Hello guys. Okay, so for the first course in this vegan gourmet series, I don't know what I'm doing by the way, um, but I thought the first course should be like a pasta dish, a very dainty meat, could be used as an appetizer perhaps, but a pasta dish nonetheless. And the components that I'm thinking of incorporating are like small couscous balls and then like a puree of carrots and then a beetroot infused pasta in the shape of a rose with a filling that is very cheesy but based on potatoes that I've used before. I really like it. So that's what I'm thinking. By the way, the ingredients are as zero waste as they can possibly be. We have homemade oat milk, we have flour, we have couscous that is in a cardboard box but it's easily recyclable. The durum flour is also in a cardboard box. Then we have some different small bulk things. This is the homemade cashew cream that we're going to use uh, in the puree, I have recipes for both of these things, the, both the cream and the milk, so you can go and find that as well. Then we have carrots, and this is the ravioli filling that we're going to reuse again, and then a beet from the farmer's market. This should be doable. There are a lot of elements here, and we sort of need to do it in the right order, so I think for the first thing we're going to boil the beet, and then we are going right after that to start on uh, the carrot puree. I haven't looked up recipes for any of this, by the way. This is just what I'm sort of thinking, and maybe it goes wrong, maybe it goes right. If it goes right, I'll post the recipes online so you can check it out as well. I already have the recipe for the cheesy ravioli that we're sort of going to do, but I'm going to give it a twist. But yeah, we'll see how it goes. Let's start on the beet. Because I want to infuse the pasta not only with beetroot juice, but also with a little bit of the beetroot itself. Sort of trying to do this without staining my hands all to shit. I'm going to peel it and then cut it, and then I'm going to boil it for about 10 to 15 minutes until they're soft, and then I'm going to put it aside to cool down. So while the beets are cooking, I'm going to start preparing for the carrot puree. I also prepped my carrot in advance. I usually let them soak in water in the fridge and then they're nice and peeled so I can just have them as snacks. But this also keeps them fresh for so much longer than having them stored without water or outside the fridge. I've been looking so much forward to doing this video by the way. So last night I couldn't fall asleep because I was just thinking about what if the carrot puree is too brown and not this amazing vibrant orange color. Could I then dye it with some more things? Would that also make it brown? I don't know. This took up a lot of mental capacity for me, so I'm really excited. I'm kind of nervous to see how it turns out. I haven't made any parades before, and honestly, I was thinking about whether or not I should have done like a cauliflower puree instead, because I know that's super, super easy. They rarely go grainy and they're easier to control whereas the carrot puree often sort of just lives its own life. 
there's no stopping your girl. And to make the carrot puree, I will start by submerging the carrots that are nicely chopped into small pieces. Submerge it into a mixture of the cashew cream and the oat milk. With homemade oat milk, just remember to give it a good shake before using it. And then that's going to boil for about half an hour. And then that's going to be super nice and soft and really tender. And the milks and the creams are going to make it a really, really nice smooth puree. Hopefully. <laughs> now there's not really a lot else to do than waiting for these two boys to finish. Okay. <laughs> so I'm really in love with using sort of very round spherical shapes. Um, and I had a plan with some couscous and making like small balls out of them. I'm still going to do that, but I think another round shape would be really... Shit. Okay, 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 okay. Now we know, now we know. And we're back, okay. Um, so we're going to make these corals that you simply just make out of flour and oil and water. And we're sort of going to add them sort of like decorative elements. Um, so, because I have no actual idea what I'm doing, I thought it would be best to uh, check out a recipe for this coral and then base what I'm doing on those measurements. 65 grams of oil. The recipe that I found calls for an immersion blender. We don't have that, so we're going to use my little tiny food processor. 55 grams of water. Do -do 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 -do. And 10 grams of flour. I don't even think this scale knows what that is. And a pinch of salt. While we are at it, we might as well take out the uh, beets. They are they are soft and done at this point, so we, I just really quickly rinsed out the blender, but because there's just water, flour and oil in it, I don't think it matters that it's not completely clean. So we're going to add our beets. Let's try and blend it. Oh yes, the colour! Gonna add a little bit of water as well. I'm going to set this aside now to cool. So for the corals, I have the batter here. It's very, very liquid, which from what I can gather is supposed to be. And in order to make them really nice and completely round, I have this metal... Sh no lid on now. Okay, got that. God damn it! Everyone take a shot every time Gita Mary fucks it up. So I have this mold, so I am thinking that I can simply just place it. Oh no. Oh no. No, I can't. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> okay, so I thought I could use this mold, but it doesn't... It's not completely even on the bottom, so it doesn't completely seal shut, which obviously makes sense. But that also means that the batter will run out. So perhaps instead we should just do one big coral and then you can sort of break it apart into small bits and that could also look kind of cool. That's the plan now, Phil. So the thought is here that you can sort of just put this very thin batter on to the pan and then while it bakes or cooks, small tiny holes will appear and it will start to appear sort of like a coral and become super, super crispy and then you can use it as sort of like decorative elements on your plate. I'm hoping that's what will happen. We are still just waiting for the carrot puree, but I did assume that it was going to take quite a lot of time. We, this is where we are right now. So while we wait, I will be cleaning up some of all of this mess. But this is what we ended up with the corals. I really, really, really like it. And I think it's going to look so good on the plate. So while I am in here, uh, Jens is in the living room and I just yelled out to him that I am so sure that this is not going to go well. And I have this very exact image in my head of how it's going to look like. And um, I'm going to be so disappointed. <laughs> If I end up beefing it, pun intended, this is vegan gourmet. And like, what did you... I mean, I just, I'm just, I'm just sitting in there and like my shoulders are up here because I'm just, I'm waiting for it to all fail. Uh, not because I hope it does, but because I know there's a chance and I know it's just going to ruin the entire weekend. And uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's the stakes are low! That's living with an aesthetics. Aesthetics! Aesthetics suits. You, this one. So instead of breaking them apart, sort of just making these corals super, super chaotic on the plate, I was really keen on keeping sort of the round circular shapes. So I tried using this and sort of like punching them out. And guys, 
This is perfect. So we're gonna do that a whole bunch of times and uh, cross our fingers they won't break. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. The couscous is going to be super, super simple. Start by bringing two deciliters of water to a boil and then add your one deciliter of couscous. They don't need to cook for a long time, about one minute. Once that minute has passed, see if you can just drain some of the water from the couscous and then add your turmeric, salt, pepper, a little bit of lemon juice and some vegan butter if you have any. Then set it aside to sort of cool down a little bit and that's when we will start making the shapes and see if we can come up with some cool things that will look great on the plate. So where I'm at with this couscous is that I've made two different shapes, but I would have liked them to be smaller and, you know, like spherical, but I don't have any molds that will fit that. Um, so I've tried my ice cream scoop and then the same mold as I used for the coral. But the backup method, in case I can't get these out and I really, really doubt it, is that I simply just let this cool down and sort of use a sort of like a snow sprinkle of yellow and that will also look really, really good. So for my next trick, we are going to get started on the pasta. And the idea for this pasta specifically came from Salty Seattle's Instagram profile. She is an absolute wizard when it comes to pasta, but most of her recipes are not vegan. So I'm going to try and veganize one of her ideas. So shout out to her because she came up with it. So what we're going to do is that we're going to make ravioli roses. And I am so excited for this. It's rather straightforward. Am I going to regret those words? Probably. We're going to mix primarily wheat flour with a little bit of durum flour and then we're going to add in the beetroot water oil mixture. Mix it all real well together and knead it into a dough that we can then flatten and send through the pasta machine. So the dough is, look at this color. It is so even, so nice very pink. This pasta dough is so smooth. I'm about to ask it for its skincare routine. Now I don't have a pasta machine. <laughs> what? Now I have a pasta machine, but you don't actually need one. You can also use a wine bottle. You can use a rolling pin. But as you can see, I cut the pasta into smaller sections to make life easier for myself. And now we're going to roll it out. Rolling, rolling. Rolling on a river. After that, we're going to cut out shapes that we can then roll into roses. And this is where it gets a little bit tricky because the only pasta cutters that I have have small like dents and patterns. And for this purpose, we need it kind of clean to roll it into the rose shapes and create the pebbles. So we're going to use a knife and I haven't ever done that before, so I'm kind of excited about it. If you want to know more about the ravioli filling, which is potato based, there's a recipe on the blog for that as well. But it's super, super easy. It's making mashed potatoes and then adding vegan cheese to it and then blending it to make sure that it gets really stringy. That's basically the point of it. But let's get down to business to defeat the Huns. I have some roses, they aren't perfect but I'm really happy with them. I also made some ravioli just in case because I have more dough and I like pasta. So we have a couple of roses here. This one was way too big but I sort of ended up in a good place with a little rose like this. Why does this look like the sack the alien comes out of? Some of them are great. It took a little while to get it right so they are a little bit different but I'm not gonna sweat it. I have a couple of ones that I really like. This one turned out well and this one turned out really, really well. I'm going to make two servings, so ideally I need four. Um, so we'll see, maybe we'll use these two big ones and then these small ones. All right. I'm going to boil them in my skillet and just fill it with water so they can stand so they don't float around and get destroyed. I would have liked the pasta dough to turn out even more magenta than this. It sort of became a soft pink and like this, they kind of look like ham. Not a huge fan of the ham look though. So because I have no actual idea of what I'm doing, now I'm going to take just the carrots and not the vegan milk cream mixture. And I'm going to see if I can completely process that to a smooth puree. Honestly, no, you know what? I think I'm going to use a little bit from the pot as well. Then we're going to add some salt and some pepper. And then we're also going to add like a dash of lemon juice. Let's see if this will puree. Come on girl, come on girl. I think we did it. The color is also amazing. 
Now I really didn't want it to be sort of like grainy um, and I hope that it's not, but let's give it a taste. Oh my god. Jens, please come with me here. It's a little warm, but taste this. That's very good. Oh, I love the color as well. Yeah, I know. It's color so good. Great. Yes. Okay, so the sphere honestly ended up looking really, really nice. So I think we're going to use that. No. No, no, we're not going to use that. Okay, I'm going to see if we can add some couscous on top. I'm going to go with the snow. So we're just going to... Yes, exactly. Oh, oh no. Okay, 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 yeah, honestly, yes. Okay, so we're going to taste it. Let's just have it in frame. Pretty! I would love to hear what you think of this. If this is something that is edible at all. I like the components individually, but I don't actually know how they work together. It looks really good though. Like, I'm, I'm so... sorry you got the ravioli one. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. Alright, so I'm just... Just gonna oh, just gonna dig in here and get a little bit of the carrot and a little bit of the couscous. Could there have been more couscous on this? Maybe. I think it works. This is not the last time I'm making this carrot, carrot puree. Mm. So I thought I wanted to show you what will happen with the rest of the food that we made because obviously it's not going to be thrown away. That would be wild. So the roses that didn't turn out very well aesthetically are still completely fine to eat so I'll go and snack on these. These are going to just be snacks you know like they don't taste like anything at all but I'm not going to waste it either way. Couscous will be used for tonight and I think I'll find a way to use this with some pasta as well. So of course I'm going to use all of this and nothing will be wasted. Thank you so much for watching this video. I was so happy with the result and how it turned out. And most importantly, it tasted amazing and there was basically no trash. If you want to watch more videos like this, leave me a comment down below and let me know that this is a thing that you want to see more of. You can also leave me recipe ideas or things that you would like to see veganized in like this sort of way. I'm super open to requests because again, this is a very new segment for me. Thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time. Bye. Oh, and all the recipes, of course, down below. Okay, now bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye.